Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce that I'm here at the Ulis Nardin booth with my, with my friend Patrick Bruneau, who is the CEO well, of this brand and also Gerard Perigo. Uh, but we are celebrating the relaunch of an extraordinary watch, the first watch to bring poetic time telling to the industry, the first watch to take the movement and make it the star, the first watch where time telling was given by the actual rotation of the movement. It is the incredible freak. So Patrick, tell us all about it, sir. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're super excited this year to be launching the, uh, the Freak One. You know, the Freak comes at a certain point in its uh, life as a maturity. I mean, really, when you think of it, the, launch, the, uh, the Freak was launched 22 years ago. Uh, it was a revolution back then. It belonged to that um, incredible uh, trend of like contemporary watches. I mean, the, uh, at the, at the, uh, in the late 90s, beginning of the year 2000, a couple of uh, freak guys in the watch industry that basically reinvented how movement could look like. And we were part of those, and we're super proud uh, to be that. And we made the, uh, the freak progress over time. I mean, we make the movement progress being even becoming more and more reliable, still using the very spirit of the Freak in terms of design originally and making it evolve. I mean, it became automatic. Uh, we've been using more and more silicon components in it. It becomes even more reliable. So it, this is really a great achievement. And, uh, and we're super excited. We feel, I like the word maturity because mm -hmm. we feel this one um, is like, uh, I think it epitomized what the brand stands for. The, uh, the thing which is incredible with the Freak is like, um, it's the uh, this one is probably now the the quintessence, the essence of what our, of what the uh, the freak is, and we very at least now now you know we don't we not on niche brand. I mean uh, we're a little bit more than that. So whenever we make a watches, we also want to make a watch which is highly wearable, highly readable, where the ergonomy matters a lot. And I think we have achieved it with the freak. One. It's phenomenal. You know, I, I mean uh, the freak occupies a very special place in my heart because uh, Rolf Schneider, who was. Uh, the guy who resurrected uh, Udis Now Down um, hired me to write the book for the 160th anniversary, Making of a Masterpiece. And when I was doing that, I sat with him, with Pierre Gigax, with Olebwick Oxlund, and really uh, spent some time learning about the Freak. And to me, what distinguishes it from all the other watches that have very interesting and artistic interpretations of time is those watches all have mechanisms to make it look more complicated. The Freak is actually a reduction of watchmaking to its most pure and essential form because it's the movement rotating itself to give you time. Now, I want to talk to you all about the sociological relevance of the freak because today we live in a world where some of the most successful people have come about their success through very unconventional ways by being freaks kind yeah. of, right whether you're a, an entrepreneur in the tech field in the uh, bio um, a science field in the um, uh, you know internet or application field and so on like in the crypto field as well I mean why do you feel that the freak from a sociological perspective has more relevance than ever oh yeah it's it's, it's a good question and you're referring actually to the people that work on this initially, the great thing, the ear. The ear on the booth, the next door, Pierre Gigax is here next oh, door. Wow. Yeah, Ludwig is, is, is over there. No way. Yeah, absolutely. I love I mean, those, those guys. guys they were, I mean, they're still very close to us. This is what I like in the, in the history of Felix Nana. Wow. And 20 years, it's like the same people are here, they're with us. They work, we work together to think about the brand, how we want to design Ulysse Nala in the future, and how we continue the legacy, which is also rough legacy, yes. rough spirit legacy, yes. and I think we're all inspired by that. And, and from a sociological point of view, I mean, it's sort of like we are, yeah, it's a freak, and we almost went very edgy, but now very edgy is becoming, never will become mainstream, but it's becoming a lot more acceptable for a lot of people. And you see you've been wearing it. It's a watch you can actually wear. Even it's so wearable. With, yeah, it's so wearable. And the dimensions are great. It's actually quite thin, and you know. It is. And, and, and it's, it's the original configuration. So you guys see the hour marker here, which is actually attached to the barrel cover. So it's the barrel unwinding that gives you that rotation. And then you have the gear train and the oscillator here. And that makes one rotation every hour, which gives you the minute hand. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll come close, don't worry. But uh, uh, it's, it's phenomenal and the fact that you brought the old guy old team back yeah. uh, is so wonderful from a, a emotional perspective for me I, I love this watch I love what it represents and I love that it kind of allows you to be a truly individual person as well so yeah and now we see a, a lot of her, uh, collectors and also new collectors people uh, I mean coming and discovering the freak whether it's now the freak one or the freak X and, and those that like hierarchy would go for the freak X the one the double theater we yeah. lost last year cool. but then the, uh, you, we see a, a, a very strong interest, and it's it's a watch. Actually, it's I mean I was actually was very uh, one of your counterparts, very famous a couple of minutes ago. We said, hey, I I, I acknowledge 
that this watch is fascinating. It may be not for me, but it's fascinating. And I'm very happy with that. It's maybe not for everyone, but actually, and, and I'm, I'm glad with that, but it has a lot of character and everyone knows it stands for a quality of horology, which is rare. Uh, I want to tell you a freak story. So I was wearing my, my first generation freak on mm. a Singapore Airlines flight um, and I had my hand behind my back and <laughs> I heard this guy just go, hey, you're wearing a freak. <laughs> And I turned around, and it was uh, the owner of, um, of Bell and Ross, Carlos Rosillo. Really? And he said he said he, to me that he saw it from four seats down, and he said, "I don't care who, the, who this guy is. I have to meet him because he's wearing such a cool watch." And we became friends as a result of that. That's and that's nice. a true story. And it's I, nice, and, uh, and, yeah. and believe it or not, that the number of CEOs in the watch industry that do on a freak yeah. is great, which I, I think is probably the best, I mean, uh, the best way to illustrate the uh, the interest. I mean, very often uh, watch heroes are watch lovers, are passionate watch lovers, and those guys own freaks, which is great. It's awesome. Patrick, thank you so much, sir. It's Thanks, a pleasure Ray. as always. Thanks. Hey guys, thank you for joining us. Cheers.